Today we're going to talk about quaaludes. I saw a random clip the other day from the Wolf of Wall Street where he had taken quaaludes and it's a famous scene where he can't even get to his car because he's so sedated. So I thought to myself, I want to learn about what these things do. So why not make a video and teach you guys and I can learn along in the process. Let's get started. So like always, let's start off by defining some terms. So quaalude is the everyday name for the drug methoqualone. This is methoqualone right here. Methoqualone is a hypnotic sedative. It's a part of this class of substances. Hypnotic meaning it causes sleep. Sedative mean it depresses the central nervous system. And this is where you get the intense relaxation, which we'll talk about in a second. It was mainly used for insomnia and it's a very strong muscle relaxant. But from what I understand, it was mainly prescribed for insomnia when it was on the market. We'll talk about why it's not on the market at the end of the video. It increases what's called the GABA receptor. It increases the GABA receptors activity. And we'll learn about that in this video, but this is a really important point that speaks to how this thing even works in the human body. And they are similar to benzodiazepines like Xanax. Vast majority of us have heard about them. Some of us may have taken them and barbiturates like phenobarbital, pentobarbital, drugs like that. So for those of you who'd watch my videos, when I talk about drugs, I like to always talk about the families they're a part of. You can think of the drug families like your family. You have a mother and a father, maybe some siblings. You are a part of your family, but you are unique in your personality and things like that. This is how we should think of prescription and recreational drugs. So the family that methoqualone belongs to is called the quinazolinones. The specific quinazolinone is for quinazolinone. Now this one's really interesting. I'm gonna post a paper from the Royal Society of Chemistry on quinazolinones. It's very complex. I would just suggest read some of it and look at the first couple pictures and you'll get a really cool idea of the diversity of these relatives. So we have methoqualone. We know it's a sedative used for sleep, but then we have vendetinib and this is a treatment for thyroid cancer. And then we have raltatrexid and raltatrexid is a chemotherapy drug. We also have alfazosin, and alfazosin is used for benign prostatic hyperplasia, or in other words, enlarged prostate. And all of these come from the drug for quinazolinone, well, the substance for quinazolinone. And vitamin K is actually very related to for quinazolinone. It's not directly related, it's kind of like a cousin, but it's of the same type. For quinazolinone is very important as far as drug development is concerned because it has so many derivatives and uses. If you look at that paper or at least look at some of those pictures, you'll see the vast amount of drugs that come from this specific type. I just think it's really important to make these connections. When we think about especially chemistry, but things that exist in the world, there's always connections to be made. And we probably shouldn't think about things individually. There's always threads that move through how things in the world work. And that's the purpose of this channel to kind of learn about this stuff. Quaaludes are very interesting in how they work. So let's get a little deep here. I'm gonna try my best to explain this. So I mentioned that quaaludes act on this thing called the GABA receptor, specifically the GABA A receptor. So let's talk about that a little bit. So GABA, this molecule, this is an inhibitory neurotransmitter. Neurotransmitters are these molecules that are sent throughout our neurons that help relay messages. And this is an inhibitory one, so it kind of stops or slows down certain processes to do some kind of action. Now this GABA receptor was, is what's called a transmembrane receptor. So over here, around our cells, we have this membrane of fat. And sometimes we have structures that kind of pierce that membrane. And they do all sorts of different things. This is one of those mini structures. Now this structure specifically, the GABA receptor is what's called pentameric. Hold on, I spelled this wrong. This pentameric receptor has five sides. That's why it's called penta five. So you got two alphas, two betas, and a gamma. Now these are important. I'm not just talking this to talk because different molecules bind or connect to different parts, producing different effects. This is a really, really interesting receptor. So what's interesting about this one is that we see these different drugs, ethanol, alcohol that we drink, benzodiazepines, Xanax, 
flumazenil, which is a, a drug that stops Xanax or benzodiazepines from working. So if you overdose, it's almost like a Narcan, like we talked about in a few videos ago on fentanyl. Zopildem, another word for Ambien, the really famous sleep medication that has a lot of very interesting side effects. I might make a video on that because that deserves a whole video in itself. So then we have GABA, this molecule that binds, and GABA is actually a part of the sleep process. When it binds to this receptor, it causes some further action that enables us to relax because it inhibits the firing of these neurons that keeps us awake. So there are other neurotransmitters that bind to other receptors that help us in our day-to-day -day functioning, in our awakeness. GABA is what helps put us to sleep among other things. Then we also have general anesthetics. When you go through surgery, these molecules bind at this receptor in the specific spot to produce an effect. Then we have quaaludes and barbiturates. If you've seen the connection, all of these molecules are what are called depressants. They relax the body in some way or fashion. In some cases, very intensely. In other cases, not so much. So let's get a little bit deeper here. This causes what's called chloride, chlorine ion, hyperpolarization. Okay, so I don't wanna to get too deep, but let's think about something. Every cell has some electric charge that kind of keeps it going. In my electrolyte video, I talked about how electrolytes move in and out of our cells and create this small charge. And this essentially keeps us alive in a lot of respects. Every cell has what's called a resting membrane potential. At rest, it holds a certain amount of charge, I guess you could say. When we have our neurons that fire, that firing is called an action potential. It's basically a nervous impulse that allows us to move our muscles and our heart to beat, etc., etc. In order for this impulse to fire, you have to pass a certain threshold. Think about it like this. You're running a race and you start at the starting line. The gun goes off and your goal is to cross the finish line to win the race. In this case, a nervous impulse has to break through a threshold, or in other words, it has to win this race. And once it crosses the threshold, then it fully fires and a message is carried. The resting potential you could consider as B. It starts at a certain charge and, it, and through the moving of these ions, it gains charge and the threshold can be crossed. What the whole hyperpolarization means is that as a quaalude binds to this site, a chloride, an electrolyte will pass through this pore into the cell. When this happens, it's almost like if you're running a race and you're starting 10 yards behind the starting line. So it's like C. Actually, this is not a really good arrow. It's like C. It requires a lot more energy to cross that threshold. If you're running that race starting behind the starting line, it takes more energy and effort to eventually get to the finish line. So when I say all this stuff, what it corresponds to is that because it takes more energy, these nervous impulses fire a lot slower. If they fire a lot slower, then the muscle function slows, the whole body's function slows. So that's kind of the specifics on how these drugs work. You know, this includes alcohol we drink and other substances that we just talked about. And this is what produces the effects of like a quaalude lower blood pressure, intense relaxation. That depiction in The Wolf of Wall Street is very accurate. You just are incredibly relaxed. Sedation, sleep, etc., etc. This is why quaaludes do what they do because of all this biochemistry stuff. So one other drug I wanna talk about is Mandrax, a really interesting name. Mandrax, I think is more popular or was more popular in Europe. Now this one is crazy. I, sometimes I look at this stuff, I'm like, I don't know how these people put this in the market. It is a combination of methylqualone and diphenhydramine. And if you don't know, Benadryl is composed of diphenhydramine. This is the compound that if you take too much of it, drowsiness, sedation, motor impairment, hallucinations, and even if you take a Benadryl, it'll some of them might push you out a little bit, and that's diphenhydramine. So this is a combination drug. You not only have methoqualine, but you have diphenhydramine. And this is, I can't imagine what this is like, but it sounds crazy. And this potency, along with the potency of quaaludes, is why they got taken off the market, because it's just too much. I really don't know why they'd make this, but you know, I didn't make it, so who knows. So lastly, let's talk about the ban of quaaludes. So quaaludes were used heavily in the 70s and 80s. And it was very easy to obtain. From the research I did, I mean, you could go to a, a little clinic and they give them to you like candy. 
the 50s and 60s were a big time for barbiturates, like phenobarbital, pentobarbital. Those aren't used as much, at least from what I understand, they're not prescribed a whole lot. Quaaludes are a part of this new wave or were a part of this new wave of sedatives. I think the pharmaceutical companies just need to make more money, so they put this out. And in 1984, it was listed as a Schedule 1. Schedule 1 drugs are drugs that don't have any medical use. Heroin, LSD, marijuana, some of those I don't agree with, but it doesn't really matter. It's a drug, you can't sell it, It's you can't do anything with it, it's fully illegal. It was just causing way too many issues and so it got banned. So let's go through the summary and go over what we learned. I know some of it was a little bit detailed, so let's go through it and refresh ourselves. We spoke about methoqualone, these quaaludes that are hypnotic sedatives, and they increase the GABA receptor activity. And they're very similar to drugs like benzodiazepines or Xanax. Then we spoke about the quinazolinone drug family. These really interesting, very complex family that includes methoqualone, drugs for chemo, cancer, etc., etc. Very, very interesting class of medications. Then we got into the GABA receptor, something I really should have mentioned is that when quaaludes bind, it causes the GABA receptor to increase in the amount of drugs it, it can bind to, namely things like quaaludes. We spoke about how it causes a reduced firing rate through this thing called hyperpolarization, where the cell normally has a charge and it has to push this threshold to fire a nervous impulse. And when this drug binds, it's like starting 10 yards behind the starting line in a race. It takes more energy to cross that threshold and fire that impulse, which results in things like intense relaxation, sedation, sleep, low blood pressure, etc. We then spoke about Mandrax, this really potent medication that's a combination of diphenhydramine and methoqualone. In my opinion, it's a recipe for potency and a lot of abuse, which is what happened. And lastly, we talked about how quaaludes were banned because of their heavy use, a lot of abuse and addiction, a whole bunch of stuff. And it was banned in 1984 and listed as a schedule one drug. That's all I got. I hope you guys learned a little bit through this video. I could spend my whole YouTube life talking about prescription drugs and recreational drugs, but obviously I need to get a better assortment of ideas because I just want to make this thing interesting. As always, thank you so much for watching and listening. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Tell your friends, and I'll be back soon with another video.